Have you ever done a science experiment and wondered what it'd be like if you did it big? I have. <laughs> My name is Phil, and I take your everyday science experiments and do them big. This is Science Max, experiments at large. Science Max! Today's episode is about friction. How can I hang on to this rope without falling? Can we reduce it so we can slide around? I'm going towards the wall! Can we increase it so I can climb a wall? Ha <laughs> ha! Can I use it to fly? Yep, friction. Today on Science Max Experiments at Large. Hey, Science Maximites, I, I, ah! Ugh, slippery, but that's okay because today we're talking about friction. Friction is a force that is everywhere and happens when any one thing rubs against any other thing. We do lots of things to increase friction, like uh, like wear shoes with new treads on them. And we can do things to reduce friction, like the experiment we're doing today. We're gonna build a hover disc, and it's very easy. You take some cardboard and cut it into a circle, just like this. Then put a hole in the middle of the circle. You might want an adult to help you with that. And then take a plastic drink bottle cap, like this. I like to use the ones that uh, you get on sport bottles because they have a little nozzle that pops open or closed. And then you glue it around the circle and you get this. Then you need a balloon. So you blow up your balloon. I know you know that step. And then twist the balloon so it doesn't get away from you. When it's nice and twisted, you can stick it over the drink bottle cap like this and then untwist it. And this is why I like to use the plastic drink bottle caps that come from sport bottles, because you can open it when you want. And when you do, your disc rides on a cushion of air, reducing the friction with the table, and it's almost like it's sliding on ice. You can also use CDs if you want to do a different design. Just make sure you're using CDs you never want to listen to again. Now, if any of this is too fast, don't worry. You can always go to the Science Max website where we have all of the instructions. And now it's time to max it out. We're going to see if we can make a human-sized, rideable, low-friction hover disk. I'm going to the Ontario Science Center where hopefully I have an expert that can help me. Door is stuck. I think there's a little bit too much friction with it. No. That's got it. Oh no, this isn't the science center. Did I go back in time again? Oh. Uh, it is the science center. Uh, Helena, hi. Hey Phil, you're here to see the hover disk. Yes, please. All right, come on, right this way. So I made one in the lab that uh, works pretty great. It's on cardboard and it has a balloon. The one you have here works on the same principle? Yeah, it does. But you know what? My friend Russell has some ideas about making something like this, but even bigger. Do you think we can make one big enough to ride? Maybe, yeah. yeah. All right, well, let's take a look at the one you have here. Oh, I see. Right, this one works the same as the one I made. It's really hard to move the disc, but if you add some air, it floats like a dream. There we go. Great, so let's ride it. Whoa, whoa, Phil, not this one, the one upstairs. You can ride that one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Should we bring this one just in no, case? No, that's, we... it's a little heavy. I think we can leave it there. What if we need it for no, reference? No, I, I'm sure we'll be okay. It is pretty heavy. Yeah, but... let's, come on, let's but go. Russell's made it. Are you sure we won't I'm need it? I'm positive. Okay, but if we have to come back, I get to say I told you so. Okay. All right. Hey, Ramona, you gonna change your hair? Yeah, it's nice. It's like doing this now, but used to be used to, but now it's yeah. I like it. You should give me the name of your guy, cause I wanted to. Hey, oh, hey, how are you? You ever think to yourself, no matter what I do, I can't seem to get anywhere. I can't, I can't get enough traction. Well, you, my friend, need some more friction. Which one of these two shoes has more friction? Hmm? Take a closer look. Huh? Huh? Right. Bam. This one, this one doesn't have a lot of treads. It doesn't have a lot of friction. 
but this one, it's got metal spikes on the bottom. This is called a cleat, and the spikes are for helping you grip onto the grass when you're playing soccer or golf, increasing its friction. Why do you think skis are smooth on the bottom? Come on, look at that. It's so smooth and, and glidey. My hand just, I can barely even touch the surface. It just slides right off. It's sort of glidey and smooth. They're smooth to help you glide across the snow, reducing their friction. Why doesn't this box slide down this ramp? Friction. This roller skate has wheels. Wheels reduce friction. But when I push the roller skate, how come it doesn't just keep rolling forever and ever and ever and ever? And going all the way around the world and writing a memoir. Say it with me. Friction, louder. Friction, can't hear you. Friction, a little too loud. Friction, ease it back. Friction. How can I hang on to this rope without falling? Friction. How can I, how can I jump down on the floor without falling over. Friction. And now you know your friction. Your friction. Your, your friction. Come on. Uh-oh. Uh oh, uh, Ramona, the friction sign is broken. Uh, reset. Uh-oh. The plan is to take our small hover disc and make one big enough to ride. So I'm off with Helena to another part of the Science Center to meet Russell, who has some ideas on how we can do it. Oh, hey, Russell. Hey, hi, Helena. Hey, Phil. How you doing, Russell? How you doing, Phil? So this is the hover disc. This is our small hover disc, yes. How does it work? Well, um, obviously you sit on here, right. air will go into here. It gets vented through all these separate holes here, so we get an airflow over the entire area. Hopefully this will work to, to pick someone up. All we need is... Air. Oh, well, that's easy, because the, the small one worked like this, so um, I'll just, we just put the balloon on, right? I hope you got the uh... Okay, so we put the balloon, on the... Uh, hold on, hold no. on, hold on. <laughs> Larger balloon! Oh, okay. Ah, sorry, sorry. That's okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh-oh, twist it so it doesn't... Uh, uh, losing his air! Okay. All right. On again. Hello. You grab right. one side, I'll grab the other. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah. here we go. Go. It's not, it doesn't uh, feel way too much It doesn't feel like there's, <laughs> there's a, uh, it still feels pretty friction-y. I, uh, I think we might need something more than a balloon. So what do we do? Well, I think we need more consistent air going through here. Okay. So not a balloon? Not a balloon, something, I don't know, opposite to a vacuum cleaner? Opposite to a vacuum cleaner. That would be a, uh... Like a leaf blower. Like a leaf blower. A leaf yes. blower. Right? High five. Yeah. Awesome idea. Yeah, yeah, so it is. why don't we make a couple larger uh, discs when we'll hook some leaf blowers to them and, and we'll see what happens. Definitely give it a go. Okay, great. Carbon is an atom and is the basic building block of all life as we know it. You, me, all plants. All animals are carbon-based life forms. Other things are made of carbon, too. Diamonds are carbon, coal is carbon, even pencil lead isn't lead, it's graphite, which is carbon. If you were to take all the carbon atoms in your body, you could fill 9,000 pencils. Of course, I kind of prefer my carbon where it is. Our low-friction hover disk still had way too much friction. One of the problems that Russell mentioned is that the balloon just wasn't giving enough air. But then, Helena had the idea of using a leaf blower instead. The plan now is to make a leaf blower powered disc by starting with a big circle of wood, cutting a hole in the wood where the air will come through, and then covering the bottom with a tarp that has many holes cut out of it for the air to escape. Because leaf blowers are made to push lots of air, hopefully there'll be enough for me to ride it. Well, this is the business. That's Look at this. That's amazing. It's good, right? Oh, yeah, I love so, the tube. Yeah. You know, high volume of air through that. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it's a dryer vent uh, that we, I just found it in the lab. And then this, of course, is, is leaf blower. 
Uh, so I get on here, and okay. then Helen, if you want to turn it on. Uh, yeah. So once we fire it up, the air coming out from the bottom of the disc raises me up, and I float on a cushion of air. I can't control it! Because the friction between the disc and the floor is so low, I end up floating wherever Helena and Russell push me. Amazing. Not too much control, though. I have no control <laughs> whatsoever. Yeah, no. But this is great. So the, the so we have the no friction yes. down pat. Uh, I feel we need some way to actually move. Well, uh, something to push you along. I was thinking as you were going, like you need like a broom or something. A broom. Okay, yeah. yeah. What if we do? What if we do like something low friction, like a broom, and something high friction, like that that we could really sort of stick on the ground. Yeah. yeah. And then we could build we could build two of them and we would have two discs and two ways of moving them. <gasps> Are we gonna race? And we can race! Yes. Yeah! Okay, yeah. race! That's what we're gonna do. <laughs> yeah. Here is an experiment you can do at home with friction. This is a toy boat. Yes, you guessed that right. And this is a wooden plank. Correct, that's two for two. I put the boat on the ramp and watch what happens. Nothing! The reason why is because the friction between the boat and the ramp is enough to counteract the force of gravity trying to pull it down. But watch what happens if I raise the ramp to the right height, the boat slides down because the friction isn't enough and gravity pulls it down. But when we change surfaces to this carpet, let's see what happens. Same angle, I can raise it higher, higher, higher because there's more friction between the carpet and the boat than there was between the wood and the boat. Now, if you're thinking that we're just gonna do it with a small ramp, you're wrong. Because of course we're gonna max it out. Hey, Helena. Hey. This is amazing. Thanks, I made it myself. Wow. Ready to climb it? Absolutely. Here we go. Where did it go? Huh? Huh? No problem. So that was very easy. Well, that's probably because the friction from your shoes is high enough so you don't slip. Right, and the friction from my clothes is much lower, which is why I could slide down. Right. So how do we make it more difficult? We'd probably have to make it higher. All right, let's make it higher. With the ramp at a steeper angle, I'll need more friction to climb up. All right. Ready? I'm totally ready. Here I go. No! Uh, you try. Okay, hold my intro. Here we go. Oh. oh, so clearly we are not getting enough friction between our shoes and the ramp at this angle. We should add some carpet because carpet would add some more friction between our shoes and the ramp. All right, let's add carpet. Sorry, here's your drill. Thanks. All right, carpet. Yeah. Same angle. Yes. And why have we done this? More friction. More friction. Let's give it a try. <laughs> hey, way to go. Totally able to climb the ramp. So, what do we do now to make it harder? Make it higher. Make it higher. Wow, it's really steep. I don't think you're gonna make it. Sure, if I take a really good run at it, I think I can do it. I think so. Well, there's one way to find out. No. No. Okay, so I can't do it. Is that it? Well, how about Velcro? Wow. Right? It'll give you more friction, so you can try climbing with this. We'll give you Velcro knee pads, Velcro shoes. Velcro. Velcro handholds, Velcro knee pads, Velcro on my shoes. Helmet for safety. Velcro fill! Velcro dance! Okay, you ready? Ready. All right, here we go. Ha-ha, I did it! 
creating friction between me and this ramp means I can stay up here for as long as I want. No. No. Velcro? No. No. Phil, you okay? Velcro! Friction! Your turn. Our hover disc worked well. So well that we decided to build another. If we have two hover disks, then we can race them using different kinds of friction to push them along. Something that has low friction, like a dust mop, and something that has higher friction, like a pole with rubber balls at the end. Rubber has great friction. That's why we make car tires and the treads of our shoes out of rubber. Okay, we have a giant race course that we've set up. We've got two low friction hover disks, and I'm gonna use the low friction dust mop version to propel my hover disk. And Helena, what do you have? I have the high friction rubber ball stick. Start your engines! On your marks, get set, and go! And we're off. Remember, Helena and I are using very different methods to get our hover disks moving. I'm using a low friction dust mop, and Helena is using high friction rubber balls. As you can see, my low friction dust mop doesn't make enough friction with the ground for me to push myself. Helena, on the other hand, is having no problems. Yes! I'm gonna finish like that. It feels way back over there. Uh, oh, man. I still suck at the second turn. Way to go, Helena. Thank nice. You. So, what was the strategy? What, how did it work? Well, pretty much while I was using those red balls, I was getting friction, helping me steer. You know what? I think we need a little bit more thrust. That would work even better if we had something pushing us even harder. Definitely. Uh, yeah. wait! I have an idea. Wait, hold, hold. I need your, I need your help. Come on. Okay. <laughs> I'm at iFly Toronto indoor skydiving to talk to you about friction. That's Mike, he's gonna help me out. Okay, here we go. Unfortunately, we can't hear what Phil is saying because there's too much wind. It looks like, it looks like he's trying to tell us something about the friction. I, yes, he's saying the friction from the air rushing up in the chamber is enough to counteract the force of gravity. Which is why he's able to float. Or s swim, or whatever he's doing. Now it looks like he might be saying even something like air can have a lot of friction if it's going fast enough. And the air in this chamber is going fast which is why we can't hear a word he's saying. Oh, well, he seems to be having fun. So how important is friction? Well, let's say I'm out for a drive. Car tires need friction to grip onto the road. Without it, my car wouldn't be able to turn at all. But that's nothing. Without friction, the bolts holding the wheels on the car wouldn't work. In fact, none of the bolts, screws, or glue on the car would work, and nothing would stop moving or stick to anything else. Even the trees would blow away with the slightest breeze. Friction is everywhere, and without it, nothing would work. Okay, hover disc race round two. This time we decided to have a little bit more thrust, so Helen and I, and I are going to be using fire extinguishers. Now do not use fire extinguishers at home. Fire extinguishers have a very important purpose, and it's not for this, but we got these ones special. Are you ready, Helena? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, okay, here we go. Russell? So, racers, start your engines. And go! Using fire extinguishers gives us a lot of thrust. But because the discs we're riding on don't have any friction, wherever we point ourselves, we just keep going in that direction, which makes steering very difficult. 
Cars grip onto the road and can go around corners thanks to the friction of their wheels. When you have no friction, it's kind of like moving on an ice rink. Oh no! I'm out! I ran out of I ran out of fire extinguisher at the end there, uh, but I so I had to cheat a little bit. So one for you, one for me, and all of them for friction. Oh, the lack of friction. Or the lack of friction. Science Max experiments at large. What do we do next? The larger fire extinguishers? I think so. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> See you next time. I, I know where we can get some actually. We can go if we go to um, the fire extinguisher store where we got these fire extinguishers. I think we can get big like one. a rack. Of the Science Max is a show where we take small experiments and do them big. If you want to try these experiments yourself, go to our website for instructions. But not all the experiments on Science Max are the kind you should try at home. This one, yes. This, no. Try this, don't try this. A big yes, a big no. I, I don't know how you could possibly do this one at home. And remember, if you're ever not sure, ask an adult. Thanks for watching Science Max Experiments at Large. Carbon is an atom that is the basic building block of all life as we know it. You, me, I just hit myself in the head with the friction sign. That's more of an impact, not friction, really. How can you destroy my life anymore? Set, huh?